Hello guys! Okay, so our film production company Views just got two new cameras. Firstly, it's the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro, which we made a video about, and you can shoot 6K raw video, which is really impressive. And also the Sony Alpha 1, which can shoot an 8K video. So, for us it's really tempting to shoot in those high resolutions, because we can do that. But, is it worth shooting in that, those high resolutions in 2021? What about HD? Well, there are actually several benefits of shooting HD instead. So have, let's have a look at that in this video. I just want to quickly mention that we are again a part of the five-day deal where you get content worth $2,000. It's tutorial, presets, lots from a lot of filmmakers like Cinecom and ourselves. And you get that for only $89, so it's a huge discount. It sounds like a scam actually, but it's not. And this year we made a course about how to film yourself in three levels. And the first level of this course, where I show how you can film yourself using your phone and things you have at home, is a part of that bundle. And this level alone costs as much as the whole package of $2,000 of content. So it's crazy. <laughs> Check out the link in the description before you continue, because it's only over five days. After that, it's gone. So it's easy to forget. Check it out now and then you continue the video. <laughs> okay, so why even consider shooting HD in 2021? You know, it's very tempting for us to shoot in 4K or 6K even, because we can do that with our cameras. So Morten has been shooting time lapses in 8K since 2015, and this has resulted in Samsung and other brands buying his time lapses to use as test videos on their new 8K TVs. And when you shoot in higher resolutions, you can also zoom in digitally in pose and still keep a sharp image, which is great in many cases. And if you make videos for big screens like cinemas or big TVs where the image gets stretched out, people probably won't even notice the pixels if you shoot in 4K or higher. 4K is also easier to work with in post when it comes to green screen work, motion tracking and so on, compared to HD. And if you shoot in high resolutions, you kind of future-proof your content. So maybe people are tired of HD in the future, and then you have it in 4K. Who knows? So ultra-high resolutions, that's the thing, right? Well, there are actually several benefits of not shooting in 4K and up, but shooting in HD. So let's have a look at that in this video, including a test film I shot in only HD. <laughs> Firstly, let me show you some clips I shot in 6K, 4K and HD with the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. Now, as this video is about resolution, you will of course look at that and be aware of it. But do you see the difference here? Probably a little bit. It depends on what device you use. Let's zoom in 200%. Then you probably see more of a difference. So, when zooming in digitally, you can benefit of higher resolutions. But then ask yourself, how often do you zoom in like this? So of course shooting in 4K and up will give you more pixels to work with in uh, post. And I know that also people are concerned about um, bigger TVs, you know, TVs are just becoming bigger and bigger, and if you don't shoot in 4K, that you might see the pixels on your TV. Well, let's have a look at this chart. When do you actually see the pixels? At the bottom here, you can see the television size, and on the left side, you can see the optimal distance. So when you have content shot in 1080, and you have, let's say, a 50-inch TV, and you see it about two meters away, you won't notice a difference. But when you sit closer, like 1.8 meters away, you start to see the difference. And then if you go up to 70 inch TV, you should sit about 2.8 meters away from the TV to not notice the difference. And often the thing with bigger televisions is that you actually sit further away because the screen becomes so big. So you can actually measure this in your own living room, how far away is the TV, how big is it, and then look at this chart and see if you can actually see any difference. So as you can see, 1080 or Full HD, as it's also called, is within the perfect specter of distance and size of the television. And if you even sit a bit closer, I don't think you will care about the resolution. I might know what you're thinking, that the story of the videos and films are more important than the resolution. And of course, that's a good point. We can just look at YouTube, for example. If you want a lot of views on YouTube, the top 10 videos on YouTube only two of them are in 4K, the rest is in HD. 
and many of those videos are not that old. Even one of the most viewed videos I have on my channel is actually shot with my web camera in 480p. I think those videos has a lot of views because the content is interesting. You know, the story is good. So they actually forget about the video quality and they're so sucked into the content that the resolution doesn't matter. Okay, so these examples, they were on YouTube. So a lot of people watch these videos on a phone where you won't see the pixels that easily. Well, what about feature films for the cinema? Even some of the most famous feature films out there are shot in HD, digitally, like Sin City and Star Wars Episode II. You also have TV series like Big Bang Theory and Dexter. They're also shot in full HD. It also came to my mind that the feature film I directed in 2012 was shot with a red one, but in HD as well. And that was screened all over cinemas in Norway and won the best children's prize in Norway and won the prize in Germany and Sweden. So yeah, that was also in HD. Well, then you might say that these films and videos are quite old and at that time, people did not demand 4K. But today, people demand 4K because it's become a standard. Well, we are running a film production company and actually now, in 2021, I think only 5% of our clients demand 4K. The rest think HD is good enough. Hmm. I think us filmmakers are so into the technical stuff because we, we look at all the new cameras that comes out, they can shoot in 4K, 6K and 8K. And we're so into that that we filmmakers, we care so much about it because we're so much into it and we read about the cameras and we, we just think it's so important. But we need to just sometimes, you know what? HD is good enough. Now let's look at the benefits of shooting in HD compared to 4K and 6K and all that stuff. And let me just precise that HD is a resolution. Uh, it won't change the dynamic range, it won't change the contrast or the colors in, in the cameras. Uh, HD is just less pixels and not less video quality in a way. Also keep in mind that HD and 4K looks different on different cameras. Like 4K on a Samsung S20 uh, looks very sharp because they gain the sharpness inside the camera, which sometimes looks really awful, but that's what they do to make it look sharp. While on the Blackmagic cameras, when you film in 4K, it is 4K, it's a high resolution image without adding sharpness in the camera. So it looks more smooth, but still very sharp. And now let's look at the benefits of shooting in HD. First off, many cameras like the Blackmagic 6K Pro can shoot in higher frame rates with HD compared to 4K. And to be honest, when you first shoot slow motion, 50 or 60 FPS, which is the maximum you can shoot in, in 4K or 6K, isn't actually that slow. When I do want to use the slow motion effects, I want it to be really noticeable. With HD, you can shoot 120 FPS on this camera, compared to 60 FPS with 4K. Some cameras compress the video a lot when you shoot in slow motion, like on GH4. So when you shoot in 96 FPS on the GH4, it actually looks very bad. But on the 6K Pro and other new cameras, the HD slow motion is actually very, very good. And second off, the storage. When you shoot in HD, let's say on the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro, it actually the HD material takes four times less space than 4K material. Since the files become small, you can shoot longer. Let's say you have an interview, you can make it record for a long time, that's great. And also you don't need to buy the most expensive cards to record on, because the files are smaller and don't require very fast cards. So you save some money there. And thirdly, the workflow becomes so much easier with super fast rendering, scrubbing, stabilizing, etc. And is it one thing that many people demand nowadays? It is a fast workflow. Clients expect you to work fast. With my MacBook Air, with the new M1 chip and 16 GB of RAM, I tested some editing with HD and 4K material from the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. And this is a difference in render speed. Okay, enough talk. I want to show you guys a little test film I made in HD with the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro and the Sigma 18-35mm. During only one day, I walked around with the camera shooting handheld in HD in both 25fps and 120fps. I only changed the contrast and brightness in post and warp stabilized some of the shots. 
Since YouTube compresses the videos more in HD than 4K, I exported the whole film in 4K. So if you want to see the best possible quality in HD, choose 4K in the video player. I know it sounds a bit strange, it's still HD, but it's just it doesn't compress the video that much. So choose 4K. Okay, here's a little video, I hope you enjoy. That film was so fun to make, because when you walk around with a camera shooting handheld, you get so much more time experimenting and looking around for new perspectives. You see things, and very often you need to act fast to be able to capture certain clips. For example, of animals. I did actually make a video about shooting handheld, so you can check out that video by pressing the link in the description. So if you own a camera that doesn't shoot 4K or 6K, don't worry, HD is good enough, even in 2021 and probably next year as well, and next year after that. So don't worry about the pixels, Go, just go out there, shoot, experiment, and if you don't own a camera but you have a phone that can film, use that. You learn a lot by just filming with whatever you have. And I also think that this video proved that the story and the content is the most important, not the pixels. Speaking about phones, check out my first ever course about filming yourself. Here I go through the most important aspects of filming yourself. It has three levels, where level one is using what you have to create good video and sound quality. So you can actually save a lot of money by watching that level because you don't need to buy any new equipment. And level two and three is about investing in camera equipment and going more professional. You can also use the techniques I show you in this course to film others. So I believe you get a lot of value watching this course. And as mentioned, level one of the course is a part of the crazy five day deal that is going on right now. Or you can get the whole course with all levels, including the invitation to the discussion forum, which I really do recommend. Go to annex.com. So, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Hadra!